years then, I'd like to bring out a panel of experts to talk about exactly how AppNexus Programmable Platform is going to help them solve their problems as strategic traders. Please join me in welcoming my panel. All right. Well, welcome, experts. Um, I'd like to just jump right in and ask each of you to tell me a little bit about what it means to be a strategic trader. What is the hardest, most strategic part of your jobs? Let's start with Kat Evans, Senior Manager of Programmatic Trading at Afriperf US. Cool. Hi, I'm Kat. Um, so I manage all of the trading for Havas's East Coast clients. So that's anyone working with the New York or Boston offices. Okay. So for us, what we've seen over the past couple of years is the role of the trader has changed from being something that was purely executional to now something that's more consultative. So what's really driven that is sort of increasing expectations from clients or from our advertisers on the deliverables of their campaigns. And then also increasingly they want to be more involved in the day-to-day -day decisioning around optimization. So from that, what that's done is that's really dragged our traders from being in the back room, just plugging through, pressing all the buttons to taking on, um, like being in the center of conversations now. So they're the people who you have to go to because they're uniquely positioned to be able to offer both the operational and the strategic insight around the campaigns. So not just delivering, but also communicating and giving the insights about them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and so then now to be a strategic trader, not only do you have to be able to execute a, a great campaign and get the performance, but you also need, need to be able to build a relationship with your, with your advertiser um, so that you actually then have the trust to be able to execute a more strategic campaign overall. Right, so the building trust piece as well. Yeah. Um, Emily, let's hear from you. Emily Kennedy is Associate Trading Director from Amnet Group US. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Emily. Um, I oversee trading and optimization and best practices um, for several of our brands at Amnet, um, as well as helping to lead strategy around tech and data and how, how we use that for our brands. Um, we really see the strategic trader, kind of as Kat said, as an evolution of an operational trader. So um, we're not as reactionary anymore. We're not just taking a media plan, putting it in a DSP and reacting to the data that we, that we see out of that. Um, we're really moving upstream, becoming consultants for our clients, um, helping them how, you know, work with them on their unique data, how to manage DMPs, supply, creative, really every aspect um, that goes into a campaign, we're helping consult on that. And so when the process does flow through and we are managing campaigns and DSPs, we know that all the components that went into that um, are working for the best interest of our brand. And so we're really building trust there um, and, and they know that we're not just hitting buttons in a DSP. Um, there's a lot more that goes, in, that goes into it. Right, so again, we're hearing this sort of multiple layer thing in the, the consulting and building trust piece. Uh, Laura, let's hear from you. Laura Kennig is US Trading Director at Media IQ. Yeah, hey guys, I'm Laura. I look after trading at Media IQ uh, in the US. Trading is like at the really heart of our business. It's one of our core operational as well as commercial functions within the business. We uh, care a lot about traders, specifically those who are strategic. Um, at the end of the day, a strategic trader is, is just a get shit doneer. It's someone who's highly efficient at executing in platform, but also you know, understands why that matters for the clients and how they can add value on top of you know, any programmatic execution, which is um, sort of built with the nuts and bolts of supply, data, uh, anything on top of that. So I think uh, strategic trading for MediaIQ is, um, and for me specifically, is someone who can uh, be an expert executioner, but also communicate that quite effectively, um, which is why it's really important to have traders in both commercial and analytical functions with skill sets. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and finally, Max Jaffe, Senior Vice President of Programmatic Activation and Optimization at Mplatform. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, Max, oversee programmatic trading for Mplatform slash Group M and Zaxis. And it's been, I think, what everyone's kind of mentioned is kind of reflective of what we see as well. And it's been definitely an interesting progression. I think from my side, a lot of it's really diving into the weeds and seeing how we can maximize the use of the platforms and then how we kind of translate that to meet our clients' goals or needs and kind of stay ahead of the curve, which is always a fun challenge. And 
I think one of the biggest challenges we have is because we're very in the weeds and programmatic is very complicated as kind of a lot of the topics discussed here today, we need to figure out the best way to translate that to our clients in a digestible manner without oversimplifying it. And so it's kind of always finding that good balance of education and insights that are kind of leading to outcomes. Right, so I'm hearing a lot of similar themes here. You have to get the performance, you have to generate the insights, you have to communicate them with the clients, you have to build that trust and really consult them and give them enough visibility but not too much visibility into the weeds. Sounds like it's kind of hard to be a strategic trader. And they let us out of the office now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my next question then is how has APP, or if you've used it, APB, um, affected your work thus far as traders? Yeah, I think let's I can start jump with Lara. In on that. Um, so uh, I think just in general, being a strategic trader, uh, being pulled in both commercial and analytical directions, the biggest hindrance on your ability to execute is just time. Um, specifically, as you know, companies and businesses and campaigns continue to scale, there is such a wealth of data and information that you can access. And the best traders are the ones who want to get all the way down in the weeds and then also communicate that back up top. But uh, you know, if you're running a, a large amount of campaigns or a large budget or um, you know, you're running a large business, uh, you need to make sure you're sort of automating the boring stuff within the workflow to free up the time to be more strategic in thought. So one of the key sort of values that we've seen out of APB, specifically Programmable Better, is um, in the past, like the best traders are the ones who set up the most segments, the, the most targeting strategies. They find the very nitty gritty niche contextual alignments that are really gonna drive that extra 10% of value for their campaign. Uh, and in sort of previous worlds, that meant the more strategies, the more lines. The more lines, the more hours you physically spend in office. So especially in the early days, we saw traders spending, you know, well after midnight optimizing their campaigns because they want to inno innovate on behalf of their clients. Um, APB solved a lot of those issues for us, um, which is why a lot of our traders globally have adopted Bonsai language. And now with splitters, having it available in the UI, it's going to make it a lot more uh, easy to scale. But um, you can just still tech test and execute and learn off of all your ideas and your, your targeting strategies, but um, you can consolidate it. You can physically control um, what you're doing without you know, creating a bunch of legacy sort of archaic DSP architecture items. Awesome, so splitters is AppNexus programmable splits, and that's exactly that middle layer, harnessing the AppNexus programmable bitter backend to really optimize your workflow, it sounds like. So that's awesome. Uh, Kat, how about you? You've seen some results, I think. Yeah, so we've been using uh, APB and APD um, over the last year or so, um, sort of globally. And uh, what it's done is it's actually just given us flexibility as a business to be able to impact um, or have, like, have an effect on how we bid, optimize, and target our campaigns. So um, going from like, a basic use case of just using APD to bulk upload huge zip code lists um, to then building very complex APB trees mm. uh, to then put onto our campaigns and drive the, f the performance. So from when we've used APB trees um, versus just standard activity, we've seen huge changes in efficiency. So CPMs have come down within the first month. And we're not talking 20 cents or something like that. We're talking dollars in change. Um, and then also we've seen rapid increases in order volumes for our, for our advertisers. Uh, and with that, obviously, decreases in CPA. Some, some advertisers seeing CPA decrease by 30% in a similar time frame. So really good results from the actual programming, the algorithms that are there. Um, but it's not just giving us those numerical results. It's been good for us. It's also sort of giving us that extra layer of, of transparency of being able to say, download an APB tree and make a vis visualization of it mm. and go to our advertisers and say, this is the decisioning that's happening right now on your specific campaign. So you're not just using something off the shelf, you're using something that's client centric, it, like it's been designed for you. Um, and that's kind of just given us that extra layer, that extra bit more trust and sort of the, the freedom to be able to execute campaigns more strategically. So being able to really get those results, but also having it be customized to the client and the visibility into yeah. that is very powerful. Awesome. I think, Max, you have something similar. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of the I think themes will be similar. I think what we've seen with a lot of our brands is a huge investment in enterprise DMPs and really collecting a ton of data and intelligence. And 
historically we would have all these conversations and kind of dive through the weeds of their data and then we would go in a platform and be like, cool, place a pixel, optimize the CPA and the machine will do it. And it was go from very sophisticated to very kind of generic and not simplistic necessarily, but kind of the same solution at the end of the day from an operational perspective. Um, or we would do a big kind of burdensome kind of setup like that was discussed. Um, so now I think we can really start to bridge the gap of bringing kind of fully utilizing the client's data and all the insights they have into a truly kind of actionable way while giving them more insight to like what's actually happening versus the just trust us, there are machines on the background, we'll just plug in the goal and let the machine do it. Right, because you're able to really utilize the data now and get that insight into how it's actually perfect, affecting performance rather than the sort of the... Yeah, and really learn what's working, what isn't, and dissect it and kind of action it on a much more granular level without being painful to the people on our team. So actually yeah. enabling you to be strategic yeah. without pain, with less pain. Yeah, I, think I care about the pain. Add on that as well. I don't think anyone on this panel or you know really in the audience um, trusts an off-the-shelf DSP algorithm. The reason that trading exists as a function is because um, there is a layer of human element that needs to be part of any campaign management. So things like APP have definitely helped and workflow automation are important, but I think it's steps towards, again, automating the boring stuff to allow more strategic ideation across campaigns to sort of ease what uh, Max brought up as some of the qualms, which are just trust us. You shouldn't be able to just trust us. Um, we should be able to show you explicitly why and how we're you know, driving value for your campaign. Right. You're the ones who actually build the trust with what you know, rather than just trusting a black box. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Emily, let's hear from you. What about, what do you think APP is gonna do for your strategic trading? Yeah, I mean, really to kind of repeat what these guys have said, um, transparency is really important to us. Um, we've always really valued AppNexus technology for the ability to build on that, and we've built some really successful tools in the past, um, and that's been possible because of the transparent element of the mm -hmm. system. Um, and some of these new products just add to that. Um, as Laura mentioned, there's a lot of workflow efficiency, and so we're, our traders are saving a lot of time, which is important, but we're not, we're not sacrificing the control that we have um, and the transparency that we're used to and that we need to really successfully manage campaigns. Fantastic. So with that, assuming that we've now solved all of your existing strategic <laughs> trading problems, um, let me ask you this quickly, like one or two sentences. What's next? What do you think is going to be the next hurdle after we? Uh, I think getting traders out of the room. So they're, they're going to move from being the geeks shut away in the windowless room to actually taking a more central role in overall like media planning. So, so they need to kind of transform and be a little bit more sociable, dare I say. <laughs> so continuing that trajectory up out of the yeah. weeds, perhaps. Max? Yeah, I would say it's kind of taking all of it and figuring out, you know, similar to what was mentioned, like what other roles or kind of opportunities there are with that foundation. But I do think education and kind of explaining how the nitty gritty works in that digestible way is going to be a big hurdle, but an interesting one. I think it'll capture a lot of brands and agencies' kind of attention. So really that communication piece is going to be the Yeah, the and education next, is and education. Yeah. Telling them 10 times before it finally sinks in. <laughs> 10? Only 10? No. Nah. Um, Generous. <laughs> Emily? Yeah, I think um, as ad tech evolves, um, as we've been talking about all day, um, the, the role of the trader, I don't think is mitigated by that. I think that it really elevates the need for really strong traders to be able to understand the complexity of ad tech and then be able to communicate that to mostly marketing driven uh, media, media buyers and kind of bridge the gap between both sides of that business. Um, and I think that our role will just increasingly become more important. So really deepening that expertise then at connecting mm -hmm. those dots. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And Lara? I think it's um, more of the same advancement, but better and more often. Uh, I think a lot of the workflow efficiencies that we talked about up here are important to being able to execute a campaign, uh, execute a campaign but it doesn't actually drive any strategic value for the client. So um, continuing to you know, work internally as media partners as well as with uh, platform partners such as Nexus and others in the space to um, add an additional feature targeting outside of just workflow automation. Um, we'll really take strategic traders to the next level. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you all. Thanks.